an individual from the local community here who went hunting. And he's looking for caribou, which he has been used to since he was a boy. And suddenly, an animal three times the size steps out in front of him. And he puts his gun up, and he shoots this animal. Now this animal drops to the ground, and this man stands there. And then his fear overcomes him. Instead, he turned, and he went back to the community. And when he came into the community, he met a man, and the man asked him where he had been and what he had been doing. He said he had been hunting. And he told the man, in honesty, that he believed he had shot the devil. He encountered the first moose that was ever encountered on the island of Newfoundland. The moose is the largest land animal in North America, the largest deer on the planet, and pound for pound, nature's hungriest herbivore. There are over 600,000 moose in Canada, nearly half the world's population, yet nowhere does it thrive as it does on the island of Newfoundland. Less than 100 years ago, there wasn't a single moose on the island. Today, there are almost 150,000, creating havoc with the environment and on its highways and byways. The highest densities of moose on the planet are eating Newfoundland down to its rocky core and causing more human deaths and injuries than all other wild creatures combined. The moose is Canada's most identifiable and unique natural icon, but, at least here, it's also become the most dangerous. Framing Canada's eastern shore, Newfoundland, affectionately known as The Rock, is one of the largest and oldest islands in the world. Its granite mass is a witness to thousands of years of evolution. Look closely and you'll find a piece of the Earth's original crust here. Look closer still, and you'll find more moose per square kilometer than anywhere else on Earth. 500,000 people live in Newfoundland, or one moose for every four islanders. The highest densities of moose on Earth has forced Newfoundland to confront a remarkable reality of nature, head on. A thousand pounds of moose presents a real danger on the island's highways. Almost one moose per day is involved in a traffic accident. Vehicles are wrecked, people are injured and killed. Each year we've had uh, 300 moose car collisions. And out of that, generally, there's been about 65 of these have resulted in personal injury accidents. Uh, in the last five years, we've had five people killed in the province. A half a ton on the highway is the direct result of a hearty appetite in the hills. The moose is one of nature's most ravenous herbivores and left unchallenged. It's possible the moose will eat Newfoundlanders out of house and home. Moose have, of course, uh, a great capacity to consume vegetation. Now, these large animals are obviously uh, requiring an enormous amount of food. 
The moose is even eating away at the island's economy, especially the forest industry. But the moose has made an impact on more than an ecosystem. Newfoundlanders themselves, a distinct culture with a unique and historic connection to the land, have proudly embraced the moose as one of their own. Right there. Newfoundlanders love their moose. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. I got I like me moose. I like me moose. <laughs> A million moose have been hunted and eaten here in the last hundred years. But the hunt itself, a deeply rooted island tradition and important commercial enterprise, has hardly put a dent in the world's healthiest moose population. Unlike the first moose shot by a Newfoundlander in 1904, the moose is now the devil they know and the devil they love. The rock is tough, rugged country with a mystical, hidden beauty. 8,000 years ago, the last ice age blanketed the island in a great sheet of ice. Glaciers carved majestic fjords into the coast and scraped the island's soil into the sea. When the ice receded, only 14 animal species remained, isolated from the mainland. The black bear made it. So did the caribou. The moose was not one of the original 14. There are no raccoons, no skunks, no frogs, and no snakes evolving naturally in Newfoundland. In fact, there are no reptiles or amphibians of any kind. It is an isolated, exotic environment, as fragile as the Galapagos Islands. With barely enough soil to bury their dead, Newfoundlanders have always turned to the sea for fish and to the land for meat. It is an independent, distinct culture, as rugged as the land itself. In the early 20th century, Fresh meat became a scarce commodity on the island. The solution? The moose. Within a few short years, moose meat had become a new and welcome main course. It wasn't the taste, just simple economics. Newfoundlanders quickly realized that for the same bullet, which cost them money, they could capture 500 pounds of meat from a moose instead of killing a caribou, which would only give them 150 pounds. In 1904, four moose were captured in the woods of the Miramichi in northern New Brunswick, ferried to Newfoundland, and released into the island's interior. With virtually no roads and vast stretches of virgin forest at their disposal, the island's ecology provided the moose with an all-you-can-eat buffet. Complements of the last ice age, there are also few natural predators here, especially the wolf, leaving the moose free to eat, mate, and multiply. From four animals, one million have come. The moose had solved one problem, but unleashing such a massive new animal on the island created new ones. We have a few studies underway right now to find out what impact moose are having on our ecosystem. There is concern that in such large densities that they could alter the structure of uh, vegetation in terms of the types of species that might be present.
The Newfoundland ecology is a northern boreal system, making the forests a lush mix of soft and hardwoods, the perfect diet for one of nature's most ravenous creatures. Today, scientists are in a real hurry to study what effects this large herbivore is having on the ecosystem. We are finding that um, the moose population is, of course, having an impact on the vegetational patterns of the island of Newfoundland. The primary winter food of moose will be hardwoods, birch, cherry species such as those, but it will, when those are unavailable, rely heavily upon balsam fir. And balsam fir happens to be uh, an important uh, component of forest industries. Moose are capable of essentially eliminating balsam fir because as the young fir grow, what happens is the moose tend to take the leaders, the top growing portion of these, of these trees, and eventually this stunts their growth entirely, which of course makes them uh, valueless in terms of commercial operations, which sets up a tension between wildlife populations and other human industries. You begin to see these major effects uh, on balsam fir and on hardwood species. And once they have eliminated them, then other species move in, which then changes the whole ecological community in that system. An adult moose eats over 300 pounds of vegetation per week. Like a giraffe, its long, thin legs allow it to reach twigs, leaves, and shrubs. Few animals can. It's a thousand-pound rabbit on stilts with four stomachs, lips like sandpaper, and a 14-inch tongue. Some of the foliage moose like to consume happens to be found right along the island's highways. The roadside offers fresh growth, a real delicacy to the moose. Their diet is also sodium deficient, and salting the roads in winter draws moose to the pavement come spring. So many moose, so close to the highway, has created a dangerous problem moose traffic accidents. The moose are free to roam. Uh, we have an open highway with uh, moose habitat on both sides of the roadway, and the moose freely move back and forth. You get the traffic going one way and the moose going at 90 degrees to it, and quite often changing their mind halfway across. And the result of all of this, of course, is, is the tragedy that we do have on a regular basis. You have to understand this animal, as it moves and it works in its habitat and comes in contact with people, is a dangerous species. When I came here in 1966, the, uh, the Trans-Canada Highway was uh, just about nine months old. It had just been put across. And uh, while there were, there were moose accidents happening at that time, uh, there, weren't, there weren't near the numbers. The moose population just was not that high. And uh, the frequency of the accidents were, was not that regular. For Denis Hachet, a park warden at Grossmore National Park, it's all in a day's work to clear moose remains from the highway. The animals that are struck are removed from the road to avoid them becoming a problem to other drivers and other vehicles. They attract black bears and foxes. So for the safety of those other animals and drivers, we promptly remove them from the road.
The animal's thin legs, below a great barrel chest, makes the moose a tremendous danger to drivers and passengers alike. This vehicle here, as it sits, is really uh, displaying the signature of what happens when a moose in a vehicle comes in contact. Right here, you notice that there's some minor surface damage, and this is damage that was caused by the animal's legs. The torso of the animal is well above the level of the, uh, of the hood of the car here. The vehicle drives right on in, and the torso, in this case here, the rounded portion, as you can see it here, this is a portion of the back of the rump of the moose and the moose literally comes right on in and becomes one with the vehicle at this point. And of course, also in here, whatever occupants you have in the vehicle. The moose is so well camouflaged, there are times, day or night, when they can't be seen even right in front of a vehicle. Their matte brown coat reflects oncoming headlights poorly, and on impact, it's like hitting a brick wall. The high incidence of moose accidents has spawned a unique invention in Newfoundland to protect truck drivers and their rigs. If you take a look at the tractor trailer units that are being driven in Newfoundland, you'll find the equivalent of the old cow catcher that used to be on trains. These uh, moose catchers, we, we call them, are equipped on most all tractor trailer units right now. Newfoundlanders know better than to speed at night. But even Sergeant Daly hasn't been able to avoid the moose. While it didn't do any uh, real damage to the moose and caused no injury to me, uh, it did damage my police car and it certainly damaged me and my reputation a wee bit. Grossmore National Park on Newfoundland's northwest coast, two biological studies, one on vegetation, the other on calf mortality, are revealing the long-term effects of moose on the island's ecosystem. Shane Mahoney, Newfoundland's chief wildlife biologist, works closely with Grossmore and senior park warden Chris McCarthy, studying moose from a bird's eye view. The research on moose here in Grossmore National Park is um, a fairly elaborate effort to try and understand what kinds of ecological impacts uh, this large grazing animal, browsing animal, is having on the ecosystem um, of this very majestic and beautiful natural area. Spring is calving season, when over 40,000 newborn moose calves are dropped onto the Newfoundland landscape. Although extremely protective of their young, cows and bulls remain curious about the science going on all around them. For the last five years, we've uh we've made heavy investments to try and understand the dynamics of this population in this region. We have used the, the latest and most sophisticated wildlife technologies in order to do that, including the latest generation of radio telemetry hardware, which is global positioning system radio collars, which are able to locate these animals for us uh, up to eight times a day, with, uh, with great accuracy, less than 50 meters, in some cases, far less than that. One of the most important uh, attributes of any animal population that you, you, you have to understand is uh, how many young are being born and how many of those young survive. On this day, Warden McCarthy and biologist Mahoney are searching for moose calves. 
There are over 16 moose per square kilometer in parts of Grossmoor National Park, so it's not quite like finding a needle in a haystack. Okay, the animal's on my right side. Right in the high mountains of the park, they come across a cow and her calf. Three o'clock now, the animal is. Look, see how aggressive she is there with the ears back there it is? There's a bull up here farther. Moose cows are especially fierce defenders of their young and will stand up to anyone or anything that threatens their newborn. Female moose are very large, they're very aggressive, uh, they have a very strong bond with their calves, and they can, be, um, they can be extremely difficult to deal with. Collaring calves is risky business. Using their immense size, weight, and speed, moose mothers have been known to trample inquisitive scientists. Well, they want to get off on the ground in a little bit of comfort without having to worry about a big cow coming back and trampling them. So my function now is to keep the cow away. Because once he goes back and lands, he loses sight of where the cow is and you have to pick her up. So what I'm doing is just stand above, keep the cow in sight. Nice looking animal, isn't it, Max? Yeah. No she's problem with her condition. Oh, no. She wants to get back to her calf. She's, a, she's got the, the good, I call it, motherly instinct. See her a lot. She you knows she's willing to face a helicopter to get back to her calf. Now that they've made sure the mother will not harm them, the scientists return to collar the calf. interested in understanding mortality from birth onwards because we know from our previous work that in the first couple of weeks of life there's a tremendous burst of mortality. You got the frequency here Chris? Yeah. 341. Four. Let's get our measurements first. Young calves are the most vulnerable. So in order to measure that we have to capture calves which are very young. Wait, no, no, just let's get it right up under her bristle. Okay, let me go. Got him. Our efforts in calf collaring are driven towards uh, very young animals, animals preferably a male? one day, a single day old, that we are able to capture, instrument with a radio collar, and then leave and follow at a distance from aircraft in the future to determine whether or not they live or die. Each spring, for the past five years, the research team has collared 15 moose calves. It's 21 and a half. She's a fine calf, very healthy. 18 for the, so the tine foot heart girth and total length. So we have it now. That's everything. Knowing how and why these animals either live or die helps scientists determine how much of the island's balsam fir they will consume, how many car accidents might occur, and how many hunting licenses need to be issued come fall. Their task completed, the calf rebonds easily with its mother. Within the next two weeks, this defenseless calf has a one in five chance of being eaten by one of the island's large black bear population. If that happens, Mahoney and McCarthy will know about it. On the rock, the moose is affecting more than the ecosystem. It's changing the habits of wildlife, like the black bear, the only natural predator on the island moose truly fear. Moose calves die on this island primarily from black bear predation. 
Almost all of that predation takes place in about the first two weeks of life. Nearly 20% of moose calves born in Newfoundland each year are killed and eaten by black bears. Black bears were once thought of as basically clumsy, uh, you know, berry pickers and animals that maybe scavenged carcasses but did not kill animals. A black bear can run at about 33 feet per second at top speed, which is, uh, which is quite an explosive charge. Park Warden Chris McCarthy has tracked a radio collar signal high into the Long Range Mountains. A calf mortality site is a wilderness murder scene. McCarthy's job, like a homicide detective, is to recreate the crime. We track the animal over the summer and try to keep track of uh, where that animal is moving. There's also a mortality indicator on that collar. And if it's not moved within three hours, it will double its tempo and let us know that, yeah, it's, uh, it's time to go check that out. Now, we've got some skull parts over here. This being the, this would be the upper, upper teeth. And uh, that's pretty indicative of black bear too. Of course, the teeth aren't much good eating, but everything else uh, in the skull, they like cartilage that type of uh, material. You can see a lot of uh, hair in this area. This is old moose calf hair from the mortality and a few more broken bones scattered throughout here. And these are not bears that are going in and simply dismembering a carcass and uh, in a kind of helter-skelter fashion just chewing up bits and pieces. No, they have a very methodical and consistent way of actually handling these organisms, which I say attests to the long association that they've had as predators. This is something uh, quite interesting that we found from the study, and that was that black bears, they'll, they'll use some of these patches, and the patches could be uh, six feet high, but they'll really uh, develop tunnels along main routes. And when you get a, a, a straggler, uh, a younger or an older lame moose, uh, that's when the bear will, will make his move. There is, uh, of course, uh, a number of techniques that they actually use for killing. When they kill calves, it is usually simply a matter of hitting the calf very quickly with a forepaw, breaking its neck or crushing its skull. In some cases, they will in fact apply their jaws and simply crunch through the, uh, the neck or right through the face and skull and kill the animal. Typically, the bear, after making the kill, will drag it into a more secluded area. Black bears have developed a unique ambush technique building tunnel systems through thick tree patches to get close and then surprise their prey. This location is certainly a, a, a fine uh, one for a bear to do its ambush thing and uh, that, that amounts to a, a lot of uh, calf deaths up on this highland country. Forensic investigation at the kill sites of collared animals keeps the scientists busy. In the park's lowlands, Mahoney and McCarthy have tracked another collar with an ominous double beep. This time, a bear has brought down an adult moose. There we go. This is classic, John. You see how the skin has been turned inside out here? Yeah. That's what bears do. They skin the animal right back. You can see how the, the leg bones have been skinned all down. The skin has been pulled all the way yeah. down over the body. Now, we don't know if he killed this animal, but there's no doubt only a bear is capable of doing this. They crack open a femur to check the animal's bone marrow, an important determination of health before death. At times in the field, even high technology takes a back seat.
At another kill site, a new detective mystery unfolds. They can't find the radio collar or the animal. Finally, the mystery is solved. This site is the work of poachers who have cut the collar off the animal and thrown it into a bog. I don't know if you on that. Cut there, found the antenna, stopped, couldn't cut through the antenna, went back here and cut it off. That's classic, boy. Look at that. Perfect cut. <laughs> and then ditched in here. Well, that was worth checking out. Poaching is another fact of life in Newfoundland, the legacy of a culture living close to the land. Taking a moose when you need a moose is still accepted practice in many parts of the island. One man, hunting illegally and not knowing a radio collar's function, brought it home along with the carcass. Easy pickings for a park warden who tracked the signal right to the poacher's back door. Autumn has arrived in the Newfoundland Highlands. Antlers on the great bulls have turned into massive racks of solid bone. Bull moose rarely use their antlers as a weapon. Mostly they're a majestic display mechanism, advertising health and vitality to fertile females and warning lesser males to back off. Bears, accidents and hunters all do their part to cull the moose population. But every fall, the moose do their best to replenish the species. Usually in September uh, and on through part uh, of October uh, is the mating season for moose. And this is the time, of course, when the great battles between the big bulls occur. Large males uh, you know, will go well in excess of a thousand pounds. And moose actually have gone to 1,800 pounds in some cases, so they are truly a monstrous uh, sized animal. The largest male will be the male that will actually gain access to the females. Any individual male may, in fact, have to fight with a number of other males to establish uh, who is dominant. Sometimes these fights are, uh, are extremely intense, but more often there's a great deal of display. Certainly some of the larger bulls can command a larger harem. The other males, the inferior males, they'll immediately stand down. So as a preclude to uh, the actual uh, mating between a pair, the male, which uh, can impregnate uh, quite a few different females, will uh, move, move away from the main group. Bull moose usually remain loyal to one or two cows during the period females are in heat. The moose cow itself is a reproductive marvel. When ready, cows will give birth to one, two, and sometimes even three calves. When the male uh, approaches the female, the female indicates her, her readiness by allowing him to get a little closer. The female will allow licking as well, where the bull will be licking the, the rump of the female. The bull will also put his head on the back of the female and in, in laying his head on there he's testing out her receptiveness uh, to, to his uh, eventual mount. 
when the timing is right, the bull will mount the female and uh, intercourse will be fairly short. And typically in Newfoundland, 85% of females are bred within the first heat. As a result, the nearly 40,000 calves born each year on the island creates an instant population explosion. While moose mating rituals are unfolding in the backwoods, in communities across Newfoundland, hunters are getting ready to get their moose. Like to go moose hunting, hunting in the fall. Like to go moose hunting, answer the hunting call. Got to get me moose, boy. Well, first to get a moose license, you will play for six whole years at $35 a crack gold For three autumn months each year, hunters take to the hills for two important reasons, moose meat and moose management. Nowhere near civilization, 300 miles away. But I got to get me moose, boy. Like to go moose hunting, hunting in the fall. Like to go moose hunting, answer the hunting call. Got to get me moose, boy. To get you where you're going, it's a Hilton on four wheels. I mean, when you consider that we only have about 550,000 people, to have about 50,000 of them actually engaged in the pursuit of one animal in the fall is quite extraordinary. They were on their way to our backyards and the way was out to their herds. Get me, get me moose, boy! to go hunting, hunting in the fall. I don't know how fair I went to it, but I tried it. And then oh. you'll use the knife to finish the skin. Oh, you need the, the knife skin, to finish yeah. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's to the hide now, my man. Oh, I this. Tell your brother-in-law or your son, sharpen his axe. <laughs> you can make a nice lamp. That'll be the base for your lamp. You clean that all out, take mm -hmm. the stuff out of the bone, we and they use that for lamp. And then you put your shade on top. That, yeah. But that's if you're really, really into it. You'll have to file his toenails, they're kind of rough. I lived in Brampton, Ontario for 35 years. And 25 of those years I worked at Simpsons and uh, Hudson Bay Company in management. Anything? You know, you had to get all dollied up and go to work. Well, look at me now. Don't you drop fire. Oh, God, who'd ever oh. think I'd be doing this? What? <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> you, know, you got it? <laughs> now. Now put more and went over there, what? Now, tie him on. I have a moose license, and hopefully when it gets nice and cold, Mm. I'm going to get mine, and I'm mm. going to shoot it. Mm. Have you ever shot a moose before? No, but I'm hoping to. I'm going to. We went target practicing a couple of days ago, and I uh, Hit shot the far three from times. the bullseye. So you know you got a big space on a moose, so God, I can't miss that, can I? you got a scope on, have you? No, scope. Huh? Just the old eye. Oh, no, not bad, naked eye. That's all I use. That's too. right. <clears throat> okay, we we better get this. Look at the flies. They're going to have it eaten. Nah. You'll have no moose left. No, nah, I'll rest at okay. Dressing a moose in the woods is hard but necessary work. After a long, tough day, these hunters, like thousands of others, have earned their winter fare. has changed the delicate balance of Newfoundland's ecosystem. It has also contributed greatly to the island's culture and folklore. One could say it's been a good fit. The culture here was based on a tremendous backdrop of isolation. Each small community was accessible only by boat, pretty much isolated from every other community. A man's fish was his currency, and from that he received everything else that he required to live and to raise his family. 
you got it with your own hands, and you you know you, it's uh, something you done yourself. I don't know if you take a little more pride in it or what, but uh, it seems to taste a little better. Uh, down too far, I guess. There we go. Moose tongue. You want <laughs> Bushel. Charlie Bushel. Oh. There's enough logging roads around here to take a walk up off the side of the road and just a half hour before dark or early in the morning, just after daylight. But I like hunting them. I like, you know, going out and camping in the car or tent or whatever. And I used to walk down around the pond or up there's a couple uh, sawmills up on the other side there, so you usually walk up there. This is a nice little area for hunting, you know. There's always a bit of moose around. I usually give a bit away, but I mostly keep the rest of it for myself and the family, you know. Moose remains an important food source in Newfoundland and is found every night on dinner tables across the province. Well, certainly the moose hunt is an, an important part of the Newfoundland culture. The people uh, of Newfoundland have survived off the land for uh, a few hundred years now. And the moose has uh, become an important part of the, the lore and the, the dinner table as well. What are we going to have? Have some moose? Yeah. Moose. Yummy. There you go. It's, uh, for me, as close to beef as, uh, as I've ever tasted in wild game. The big advantage, of course, is that this meat is, uh, is pretty pure. You don't have to worry about uh, chemicals uh, from the cattle yard. What's better than moose roast, girls? Nothing. <laughs> right on. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Okay, you want some meat? Certainly fan meat. Yeah. Certainly families share in the success. Uh, if somebody isn't successful with their license, there's usually uh, uh, a sharing of the of the meat. You just want moose. You don't want any meat. <laughs> what do you think moose is? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Get it down there, you. Put it down. Yeah, watch out now. That's the big knife. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's how it takes. Uh -huh. yes. <laughs> In 1904, the moose was introduced to Newfoundland, and from those first four animals, one million have come. One of the most beautiful, rugged islands on Earth has been changed forever by this massive, voracious herbivore. Culturally, ecologically, and economically, the moose has changed the rock for the better, and changed it for the worse. It is the global paradox of science played out with a Canadian icon on a local stage. An animal that did not evolve here naturally has achieved amazing success in the Newfoundland environment and made a lasting impact on the island's history and culture. Every year, the moose hunt deposits $100 million into the island's economy. Yet the moose prevails in massive numbers. It has become a real hazard on the road and eats so much vegetation that it not only conflicts with Newfoundland industries, it's affecting the natural community of the island. Less than a century ago, a hunter went out looking for caribou and shot the first moose ever seen on these shores. He thought he'd shot the devil. He may have been right. Newfoundlanders have been dancing with the devil ever since. <laughs>